what the ancient Vedas and Upanishads told us 10,000 plus years ago, the modern science and quantum physics are now confirming it. It seems Adiguru Shankaracharya once said that he could sum up the entirety of the teachings from all the Vedas and Upanishads in one sentence. And that is Brahma Satya, Jagat Mitya, Jiva Brahmaiva Napara, which translates to Pure consciousness is real and absolute. This world as we see it is an appearance and Jiva, which is you and me, are one with that infinite consciousness. So in this video, we will go deep and through the five sections of this video, we will understand the nature of consciousness. We will understand what quantum physics is saying about consciousness. And we will also come to know what the ancient Upanishads told us about consciousness and about the nature of reality thousands of years ago. The Advaita channel is about conscious living and conscious creation. Here we explore Vedanta and various spiritual teachings from ancient India to understand the nature of reality and to consciously create our lives. So make sure to hit like and subscribe to our channel to help us spread this knowledge. By the end of 19th century, Swami Vivekananda said that at some point modern physics will inevitably converge with Advaita Vedanta. And Vivekananda believed that Advaita Vedanta, which is the teachings from the ancient Vedas and Upanishads, is the ultimate philosophy. And it is also science. So, in the first section, let us understand Maya and the appearance of the world. So, as per Shankaracharya and as per Advaita Vedanta, this world as we see it is an appearance. An appearance does not mean the world is unreal. At the same time, it also doesn't mean that the world is real. So, Mithya means that which is neither unreal nor real. The best example to understand this is the example of the dream. Now when we go to sleep, we dream different dreams. And once we wake up, we realize that it was a temporary experience that we went through. It was not absolute in any sense or it was not real in any sense. But at the same time, it was also not unreal because we did experience it at that point in time. So this is how we need to look at this world. This world is a temporary phenomenon and there is something more to this. There is something beyond this to which the Upanishads and the teachings of Shankaracharya points us toward. So this is the meaning of Mithya. Now the Upanishads and the Advaita Vedanta tell us that this world is because of Maya and it is a projection. But what is modern science telling us? What is quantum physics telling us? This is what we will look at now. Now, take any object for that matter and let us think about it. Now, this is a small ear pod that is in my hand, which is matter, right? And this object, whatever it is, is made up of atoms, as we all know. You know, when we break open the atom, what we find are protons and electrons, etc. And these protons, electrons are called quantum particles in quantum physics. And these quantum particles are nothing but waves and energy. This is not as per philosophy, this is as per modern science. So as per science, this object and everything that we are seeing, the world that is around us is appearing to be but it is not so. So matter appears to exist in consciousness, but fundamentally it is energy and waves. I know this is hard to grasp and I'm not saying here that I understand quantum physics or quantum mechanics, but this is what the scientists are telling us. This is what is being said by these leading physicists that are out there. Now this is what the ancient Upanishads told us. When the Upanishads tell us that this world is Maya, they are not telling us that it is unreal or the world does not exist at all. All the Upanishads are telling us is that there is something beyond this world which is absolute, which is real and which is permanent. 
And this world is a temporary phenomenon that is appearing in our consciousness. So, this is how we need to look at the world. In section 2, let us look at consciousness and let us understand how consciousness is fundamental. Now, as per Advaita Vedanta, Shankaracharya tells us that Brahma Satya, which means Brahman is real, absolute and permanent. When Advaita Vedanta talks about Brahman, it is talking about Satchidananda and Chit means consciousness. So, we are discussing consciousness here and this consciousness is absolute and permanent as per the teachings of Upanishads. This consciousness existed before the creation of the universe and it will continue to exist after the dissolution of the universe. This consciousness is beyond time, space and causality. And even now, as we are experiencing this world and as we are experiencing this duality, only consciousness alone exists as per the Upanishads. So, the world and the duality that we are perceiving is simply an illusion. Now, let's understand what quantum physics tells us when it comes to consciousness. So, it seems there has been going on a lot of studies on the effect of a conscious observer on the behavior of quantum particles. There was also an experiment that was conducted called the double slit experiment, which shows us that a conscious observer is influencing the quantum particles and the behavior of the particles. So, this tells us that consciousness has influence over matter and this has not been conclusively reported by quantum physicists to the public but the results of this experiment is fascinating and it suggests that consciousness does have an influence over the behavior of quantum particles itself. In section 3, let us talk about unity and non-duality. The Chandogya Upanishad says at one point, Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma, which means everything is consciousness and every aspect of every part of existence is consciousness. This universe is consciousness and all that we see is consciousness. And even when we look at some of the teaching some of the concepts within quantum physics, this is becoming more and more evident. Now, we understood that matter as we know it as an independent solid existence is being questioned and scientists cannot definitively tell us what matter is. And we also looked at in the section 1 how everything is energy and how even matter, although it appears to exist in a certain form, is fundamentally energy. Now, what the ancient Upanishads tell us is that the entire world appears in consciousness. And since the universe appears in consciousness, it cannot be anything apart from consciousness. And I think eventually, science will come to this conclusion that everything is interconnected. And the concept of quantum entanglement itself suggests that there is an obvious connection and there is an obvious unity within this existence. Now, the quantum entanglement states that one particle is instantly correlated with the state of another regardless of the distance between them. Now, to understand what Advaita Vedanta is telling us about the nature of reality better, we need to understand the concept of Maya. If we truly understand what Maya is and what Adi Shankaracharya meant when he used the term Maya, we will understand everything about this universe. Now, many people misinterpret the word Maya. Maya is not telling us that this world does not exist. Maya simply tells us that the world is an appearance. It is neither real nor unreal. It is a projection and it is a simulation. And the way we are perceiving the world right now is an illusion. And if we think about it, this is similar to what quantum physics is saying and what modern science and physics is telling us. Even as per modern science, the world and matter appears to exist. Inherently, it is energy which is all interconnected. But 
it is not appearing like that to us it is appearing as something which is defined something which is local in time space and something which has an independent absolute identity this is maya this is what adi shankaracharya was telling us 1000 years ago there is absolute unity in this world everything is made of one substance although it is not a substance but we perceive duality this is because of an error this is maya there is only pure consciousness which exists but we perceive the universe to exist independently and we perceive matter to exist independently this is maya only the self exists everywhere all the time but we don't see this we see separation we see division this is because of maya maya has basically two qualities the first quality or aspect of maya is projection within that pure infinite consciousness maya projects this universe through the canvas of time space and causality so basically maya is time space and causality which appears in consciousness and within the canvas of time space reality the rest of the universe unfolds in this way maya projects the universe or creates the universe and the second aspect of maya is concealment maya hides the reality from us hides the absolute truth from us hides the inherent oneness in everything it hides the true nature of self and the world so these are the two qualities of maya and once we truly grasp what maya is we can get hold of the nature of reality itself and all of this we can understand through the example of the game of life now imagine there is this advanced simulation and there is this advanced virtual reality headset that you are wearing and you are playing a game inside a simulated environment this is already a reality to our generation and let's say we are playing the game and we are involved in the game and we are walking around the streets of the game we are talking to different people we are involved in various activities within the game within the game we are a different character which is separate from our real identity but because of our involvement let's assume that we forgot who we truly are and we just think that we are the character of the game because we are so immersed in it and within this game we think that the other players the road the sky the different objects of the game have their own independent realities and we think that they actually are separate from us but it is all one simulation it is all one connected environment and we truly are not the characters of the game this is how we need to look at the reality also we have right now identified ourselves with this body and mind which is the character within this world within this game we are actually playing in this world but in reality we are not this character we are that infinite consciousness which is beyond the game which has right now identified itself with a small character of the game and within this example of the game of life the entire simulation the entire game is maya and everything you experience within the simulation is maya and by understanding this we must wake up from our identifications coming to section 4 transcendence and eminence as per my understanding and my interpretation of advaita vedanta that infinite consciousness is both transcendent and eminent so that consciousness or god is both beyond this universe and yet it is the universe also this is hard to grasp but again we can understand this through the dream example when we are dreaming different dreams and when we are within the dream world we are not who we truly are we identify ourselves as the dream ego and we experience different things in the dream world but our mind our actual mind so to speak and our actual body is apart and it is transcendent from the dream world and we are 
sleeping somewhere on our bed and we are experiencing the dream world. In this way, the true us is transcendent from the dream world. But at the same time, the entire dream experience is simulated by our mind itself, is created within the mind, it is projected by the mind. In that way, it is eminent also. So this is how we need to understand the concept of God or pure consciousness in Advaita Vedanta. That pure consciousness is within which the universe has appeared. Now let us discuss about matter again to understand this further. Initially we discussed how matter is simply energy and matter is simply quantum particles that are waves. So if matter is not real, then what is real? If matter simply appears to exist and it appears to be, then what is the fundamental reality of this existence? For this, we need to look at our own experience. What is it that we can be absolutely sure of in this world? It is the fact that I exist. I exist is what I can say without any doubt. This is the only thing that I know to be true as of now. Everything else can be a concept, everything else can be disproved, but my existence cannot be disproved because I am the witness of it. I am experiencing it right now. Now this is consciousness. In my consciousness, I am experiencing this world. In this consciousness, I am looking at matter. And what I am looking at as matter, as this universe, is simply energy and it is simply appearing to exist and it is not ultimately real. This is the conclusion that we come to through quantum physics as well as through Advaita Vedanta. But at the same time, consciousness can never be unreal because it is the only thing that is actually real and we can conclude on this not based on faith but through self-inquiry and just by observing our own experiences. So consciousness is real and matter appears to exist. This is what we can come to after going through this. And this is exactly what Adiguru Shankaracharya told us thousand years ago. He said and I repeat, Brahma Satya Jagat Mitya Jiva Brahmaiva Napara. Consciousness is real and absolute. This world and matter is simply an appearance and I, the Jiva, is one with that infinite consciousness or God. Aham Brahmasmi. This is Advaita Vedanta. And in section 5, to understand this better, you need to understand the Young's double slit experiment, which shows us the significance of consciousness and the role of consciousness when it comes to the behavior of quantum particles. And we had made an elaborate video explaining to you the striking parallels between quantum physics and Advaita Vedanta. So make sure to check out this video next. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and I'll see you on the next one. If you liked the video, check out this next and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content like this. Thank you and welcome to our community.